Wow, you're the grand champion. I saw your fight against the Grey Prince. You're the- Not now. Go away. Shoo. Hi. Let's take it back. Way back. No, 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 no. Not that far. Let's go back to 2006. The year when Fergie gave the world a tour of London's historical landmarks. Everyone's best friend was a guy named Tom, and Todd Bethesda released his classic Elder Scrolls title. British Weather Simulator. So, of course, the question is... Oh, wait, yeah, the bit with the music. Can you beat Oblivion with poison only? Yes, of course you can, and all things said, it's pretty straightforward. But after doing this run in Skyrim as well, I didn't want to neglect Bethesda's goofiest game to date. And let's be honest, this is mostly an excuse for me to play Oblivion again while making some awful jokes about it. So here are the rules for what it's worth. I can only deal damage through the use of poisons. I have to beat the main storyline, and because I will be a sneaky little sneaker, I also gave myself two side goals. To obtain the Grey Cowl of Nocturnal and the Skeleton Key. I wasn't concerned with this being a super tough run, so I'm playing on the default difficulty. And realistically, bumping this up would only mean I'd need to craft more poisons and potions to achieve the same results. Look, not every game has to bend me over and give me a prostate exam, guys. I am using some basic mods to improve some of the visuals and fix bugs, which I'll list in the description, but nothing that alters the core gameplay in any way. And that's about it. Time to help a dead emperor's son with his shopping list, or something. Let's do this. Now, I'm not saying I have a kink for games that start with me as a prisoner, but yeah. Bosma is my starting race for the handy bonuses to alchemy and sneak, green hair because it feels right, and of course, a suitable name for my character, because I am, in fact, totally not a poisoner. Let's go. You are the one from my dreams. Thanks, but I'm not looking for a sugar daddy right now. Turns out that this fine looking fellow is the Emperor Uriel Septim himself, and to escape certain death, he needs to use an escape route conveniently located in my prison cell. So guess it's my lucky day. After letting the bodyguards deal with any danger, I sprinted through the cave section, making sure to grab the mortar and pestle here, an essential item for creating potions, and hooked up with Loverboy again, who waffled some astrology nonsense in my general direction. Which sign marked your birth? Thief, because I stole your heart, old man. Also, it gives some nice boosts to luck, a stat which indirectly improves your alchemy power, as well as speed and agility, useful for running the hell away from everything, including my responsibilities. Wait here with the Emperor. Guard him with your life. What's that? Stand here and watch him die while doing nothing, you say? Sure thing, boss. With the Amulet of Kings now in my possession, Barrus told me to escape the sewers and find some guy called Joffrey. No idea why he wouldn't just do this himself, and it was time to pick my class and skills. I made a custom class called Poisoner, because I am, of course, not a poisoner, picked Endurance and Luck as my favoured attributes for a plus five bonus to each, and then it was time to choose my major skills. Let's briefly talk about Oblivion's slightly wacky levelling system. All skills improve by using them repeatedly. But here's the fun part. Only increases to the seven major skills you select at the start of the game will actually level your character up. But enemies also scale up with you as you level. Which means if you pick skills you use too much, like athletics, which increases every time you run, you can end up in a position where you level too fast relative to the damage you can output. 
making the game much harder. I therefore wanted to pick a mixture of skills I would actually need and skills I could control the levelling of. Restoration and Sneak would be two skills that would just level naturally from playing the game. On top of those, I selected Alchemy, Alteration, Illusion, Security and Speechcraft as my five others, because I would have some degree of control over these, which I'll go into more detail on later. And it was time to escape the sewers for good to begin my new life of definitely not poisoning anyone. No sir, couldn't be me. First up, I travelled to Bravel to sell the stuff I'd picked up during the tutorial. I could have gone to any city really, but I just like saying, travel to Bravel. Next stop, Coral, where after watching the 5-0 take care of a group of magic cucumber smugglers, it was time to procure a suitable weapon for the run. Now if you watched my poison only Skyrim run, you might remember I had to get creative since whacking a load of toxic juices on your pointy stick and poking people with it wasn't a viable option there. Well, guess what? In Oblivion, it totally is. Only problem is we need to find a weapon that does zero damage, because any weapon damage wouldn't count as poison only. Luckily, the official Fighters Stronghold plugin has the very thing we need, but I would need to do a little work to get it. West of Coral lies Battlehorn Castle, which upon arrival is being besieged by bandits. To liberate the castle, I would need to dispose of them, but unfortunately I had no way of doing that yet. More fortunately, enemies in Oblivion will literally chase you the length and breadth of the observable universe, or in this case, to the coral gates to get slaughtered by the guards. Thank you for risking your own life to help us. Yeah, about that. Nilfassen the Merchant's Inn in the Imperial City sells all the upgrades for the castle, but I was still a broke ass bitch, so first step was to get that Skrilla. I looted all the corpses outside the castle for gear to sell, and headed out to Wayneham Priory to meet Joffrey and help myself to all his free stuff. Oh yeah, and something about the Emperor having a secret son and I should probably find him, I don't know, I wasn't listening. This cannot be. Oh no 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 no, it can, trust me. I have the attention span of a- Oh my god, look, a pigeon! Onwards to Skingrad, where I collected grapes and tomatoes to make a bunch of Restore Fatigue potions I could sell. We can't talk here. Bro, that's literally what we're doing. Finally, I walked over to Castle Bruma, bypassed some easy locked doors to access the private quarters, and took 800 gold that was casually sitting in a trash can, because that's just how rich people get down. With my newfound wealth, I could buy the training room upgrade for the castle, which comes complete with a trainer. Shagrol the Orc, and if you ask to spar with him, you can then pickpocket him for a choice of three sparring weapons, none of which deal any damage, and since I would only need them to apply poisons, I settled on the smallest and lightest option, the dagger. Keep up the good work! What up nerds, let's talk builds. It goes without saying that the most important skill for this run is alchemy, and this is how it works in Oblivion. In order to craft potions, you need a mortar and pestle. On top of this, you can add a calcinator, retort, and a lembic, which all improve aspects of your potions. You can help yourself to novice versions of all of these from any mages guild, as well as helping yourself to all the spares for some easy cash. Potions and poisons require a minimum of two ingredients to craft, and each alchemy ingredient has four properties but you can only reveal all of these as you level up your alchemy skill. And you can only make potions based on known properties, which means during the early game, my options were fairly simple and limited. Some basic restore health potions and damage health poisons would do the job. One thing to note here is that all crafted potions work on an effect over time basis. So, you can't craft a poison that does one flat chunk of damage instantly. It will always follow the formula of do X damage per second for Y amount of seconds. Which means the basic strat for this run is to apply poison and then run away like a coward until the poison effect runs out, rinse and repeat, 10 out of 10 gameplay. As for the other skills, these are fairly simple to work on. I could level restoration just by using my healing spell when required during the normal course of gameplay. 
Sneak can be leveled by crouching and repeatedly walking into a wall near one of the city guards. I'm not a weirdo, honest. Cutie Patootie Delphine Gend in the Bravel Mages Guild sells a couple of really useful basic spells for levelling up illusion and alteration. I'll be honest, my character overhaul mod gave her one hell of a glow up. The Inspiration spell gives friendly NPCs the rally effect for 20 seconds, which is basically the magical equivalent of a big warm encouraging hug of love. And since it hardly costs any magicka, you can run around cities spamming it at everyone to quickly level your illusion. You go girl, you're doing great! Delphine also sells the open lock spell, and by casting this repeatedly at an already unlocked door, you can raise your alteration skill, because that makes complete sense and Oblivion is in no way broken. Finally, when it came to taking level up bonuses, I would be focused on luck, endurance for extra HP, and intelligence for more magicka. With that out of the way, let's get back to your regularly scheduled chaos. With my trusty blade in hand, it was time to test out my poisons. So I guess I should head to Kvatch to find the Emperor's bastard son. I don't mean that as a slur, I'm sure he's a lovely fella. Deidre overran Kvatch last night! Everyone else is dead! Fear not, my good man, for the future hero of Kvatch is here! Uh, yeah, okay, no, <sighs> bye. How did you get in here? I just used the front door over there, right next to you. After taking precisely five seconds to convince Martin Septim that he is, in fact, the most important person in the universe, I told him to follow me, but sadly he refused until I could close the Oblivion Gate outside the city. Oh well, in for a penny, in for a pound of flesh. Navigating the Plains of Oblivion is pretty straightforward, as long as you stick to the age-old strat of just fucking run. The general idea with all of these is to reach the top of the tower portal and remove the sigil stone held within to close the Oblivion Gate. This particular gate is slightly more involved as you need to take out the gatekeeper to obtain the necessary key. But luckily poison and gravity came together like Voltron to make my life easier. I grabbed the sigil stone, the gate collapsed, and I returned to Savlian to give him the good news. You've got far more combat experience than these men. Yep, that's right. The green-haired elf lady with a few bottles of kale smoothie definitely has more combat experience than your career soldiers. Uh-huh. Flowers and flowers, yes, so many flowers. So many hours spent picking those flowers. Mixing the potions for coating my blade in. And something about a guy called Mayrin's Dagon. Who cares about the fate of the world when you can pick flowers instead? With some more potions crafted, this was enough to get me up to Journeyman in Alchemy, which would give me more options when it came to ingredients. I returned to Kavach to clear out the rabble and took Martin to Wayneham Priory, where I was sure he'd be safe. Help! You must help! They're killing everyone at Wayneham Priory. I think they're right behind me. Oh, you think? Hello there. Slashy slash, uh poisony poison? And the mythic dawn agents were dispatched. With the priory compromised and the amulet of kings stolen by the mythic dawn, I escorted Martin to the safety of Cloud Ruler Temple. And then it was time for some basic housekeeping. I gave the market district residents some much needed wizard love to level illusion some more, and I also bought the debilitate spell from Eta Rianus. Eta Rianus? Haha, <laughs> anus. This spell paralyzes for three seconds on touch. And although I wasn't skilled enough to cast it yet, I was certain I'd find a use for it in the future. By now, I had reached level 6, at which point merchants start to sell apprentice level alchemy gear. So I bought up a full set and made another batch of poisons and potions. You can see here how the results are better than before. With my power level now over 9000, whatever that means, it was time to put it to good use by, uh. Collecting some books? Volumes 1 to 3 of the Mythic Dawn commentaries are easy enough to obtain, but for Volume 4 I would need to venture into the Imperial City sewers with Baurus, who had finally decided to actually do his job for once, and meet with a Mythic Dawn sponsor under false pretenses. The game offers you various elaborate ways to handle the meeting, 
But that all sounds like a lot of effort when you can just hide behind the door on the right and pickpocket the book as soon as the agent enters before running away. I knew all that sneakiness would come in handy. The books help to reveal a secret map to the Dagon Shrine. So, after buying Shadow Shape from Eta, an invisibility spell that requires Journeyman and Illusion to cast, which I figured might come in useful, I trekked up to the Lake Arius Caverns to meet with the cult. Now, the intended way to handle this is to pretend to be a Mythic Dawn Initiate, but yeah, get fucked. This place might be swarming with cultists, but most of them go down after one dose of poison, and I snuck my way into the shrine itself. So saith Lord Dagon, praise be. Wow, you guys really love Dagon, huh? After Mankar Cameron finished his speech, I snatched up the Mysterium Xarxes to complete my book collection and made my way out with no trouble whatsoever. Lord Dagon will welcome your soul in a Lord Dagon will welcome your soul in oblivion! Lord Dagon will welcome your soul in oblivion! Lord Dagon will welcome your- oh. Yeah, yeah, Lord Dagon will welcome your soul in oblivion, I get it, Jesus H Christ. After definitely not getting completely lost in here, I finally found my way back to the surface and returned to Martin with the book. By the nine! Okay, chill bud. Martin promised me he would work on deciphering the book, but in the meantime, Joffrey informed me that some strangers had been spotted on the roads near Bruma, and so I should go and kill them, because apparently that's the punishment for being a stranger in Cyrodiil. Ring around the runestone, a dagger full of poisons, I slash you, I slash you, you all fall down. After several doses of poison, and more circle strats than 15 rounds of cod zombies, I eliminated the first spy, located the second one in Bruma and dealt with them too, and returned to Martin to see if he'd made any progress on the book. Turns out that to complete the ritual to reach Mankar Cameron and recover the amulet, we would need several items, first of which is a Daedric artifact. The game naturally points you in the direction of Azora's shrine for this, but I settled on a much easier artifact to obtain. After grabbing the Cyrodiilic brandy that can be found upstairs in Cloud Ruler Temple, and buying myself a sexy little evening number from the Market District, I headed up to the shrine of the Daedric Prince Sanguine, who tasked me with breaking into a dinner party in Leowing Castle and casting a spell on all the guests, because he's the Jake Paul of unfunny Daedric pranks. The easiest way to enter the dinner party is to put on your finest outfit to fool the guard. Damn, who's that baddie? Sadly, this had no effect on the guard, until I also changed my rings, which of course makes complete sense. Can't imagine dressing up for any other reason. Cosplayers in shambles right about now. Okay, time to find out what this spell does. Oh. Oh my. Time for a sharp exit. Sorry for the lack of clothes, YouTube. Don't ban me. Upon returning to the shrine, Sanguine rewarded me for my excellent work with his staff, the Sanguine Rose, which I will treasure forever- <laughs> Nah, just kidding. Go ahead and destroy the fuck out of it, Martin. I won't ask what you went through to obtain this, my friend. Yeah, best not to. So we roll. With a little more blood, sweat and tears, I hit the heady heights of level 9. And this is an important breakpoint in the game, because this is when journeyman level alchemy equipment starts to spawn as loot in dungeons. Your best bet to find this is in mage hideouts, and if you make a save before entering the dungeon, you can keep re-rolling to spawn different loot inside the chests each time. Most of the places on this list are nothing but death, death, confusing layouts, death and more death. But eventually, I found a journeyman retort in an underwater chest in Fort Entius, an Alembic in Fort Sejanus, and after more ganks than an entire playthrough of DS2, I finally came across a mortar and pestle inside Sage Glen Hollow. Am I supposed to be impressed? Well, yeah. I had one more item to obtain, 
a calcinator, but I'd had quite enough of being corner banged by the Blue Road Brigade for now. Fortunately, there is one place in the game that you're guaranteed to find this item at my level. The Shivering Isles. I'd stay back from that door if I were you. Nothing that's gone in has come out right. Well, that doesn't bother me, because I'm not right anyway. Also, you'll want to talk. Do come in! It's lovely in the Isles right now. I stepped into the gate, everything turned to butterflies, which was fine by me because butterflies are cool, and I made my way up to the Gates of Madness just in time to watch the fearsome gatekeeper slaughter a party of adventurers. Yo They're bleeding all over the place. Like also, this guy fucks. The giant is virtually unkillable in his current state, but there are ways around this. This is J-Red. Say hi to YouTube, J-Red. Do you ever wonder why things look better without their skin on? Okay, okay, that's enough. You can follow J-Red to collect some bones to craft some arrows that can harm the gatekeeper, which is nice. But there is a more thematically appropriate way for me to take him out. Excuse me, coming through... Ah. Don't worry, I saw nothing, especially not this note I'm reading right in front of you. If you follow Relmina at night time as she goes to speak to the gatekeeper, and collect the tear-stained handkerchief she drops, this effectively acts as a poison that subsequently lets you do damage to the gatekeeper when he's not busy slapping you into next week. Perfect. I'm not crying, you're crying! Once inside, I race straight up to New Sheoth, where I met the Lord of the Realm, Shelgorath. Lovely guy. Time to save the realm! Rescue the damsel! Slay the beast! Yeah, that sounds kind of high effort if I'm being honest. How about I just steal this calcinator instead? Ah, good old invisibility. Nothing beats that. Now that I had the complete set of journeyman alchemy tools, I was ready to break bad. Let's cook. Stay away from me. Well, I guess someone isn't a fan of obscure TV references. <clears throat> So My trip to Shelgorath's domain wasn't just an excuse to get the calcinator, admire the skyboxes, and read the Lusty Argonian Maid. She put what? Where exactly? Wow. Letter for Orca Digestive Slime might sound like four random words thrown together, but it's actually an extremely useful alchemy ingredient which can be collected from these oversized mouldy pasta tubes that are freely scattered around the south of the Isles. Combining this with Harada root, which can be found inside any Oblivion gate, a motherwort sprig, which grows in the fields north of Kavach, creates an extremely powerful poison which not only damages health, but also magicka and fatigue, as well as silencing the victim to prevent spellcasting which would basically render them pretty ineffective while I ran around waiting for their health to wither away. Okay, time to lead some valiant men to their inevitable deaths by closing the oblivion gate that has opened up outside Bruma. Might as well collect some plants while I'm here. Bird and his pals can keep the hordes busy. Also, Bird can't die, which is nice. Fuck his friends. We made our way up the tower, killed the sigil keeper for his key, and cleared out the sanctum before closing the gate. Great work, Bird. Keep it up. Upon returning to Cyrodiil, Bird had somehow completely changed clothes, and Martin informed me that the next item I would need would be the armor of legendary Emperor Tiber Septim from the ruins of Sankator. The four mightiest blades of Tiber Septim's day, Alain, Valdemar, Relus, and Kaznar, went to Sankator and never returned. Yeah, but I'm sure they didn't bring any poison to fight all the... Undead? Shit. Ghouls and goblins, spooky zombies, undead skeletons. Hordes of Daedra face the wrath of the savior of Kvarch. I mean, technically I never actually finished saving Kvarch, but whatever. They're coming to get you, Barbara. So, undead enemies can't be poisoned in Oblivion. Well, except when they can, because using magic to convince them that they are, in fact, actually weak to poison, makes them weak to poison. 
makes sense. The Wizards Tower official plugin gives you a special player home tailored towards mages called Frostcrag Spire. This has a number of useful features, including the ability to craft your own spells without completing the Mages Guild questline. But it was looking a little threadbare at the moment, so I'd need to get some cash for decorations. I tried running around some Oblivion Gates for valuables, but maybe this was a bad idea. So not worth it. Next, I went to loot the Market District. You have my ear, citizen. Go away, can't you see I'm trying to do crimes here? With money in hand, I was able to buy the Spellmaking Altar upgrade, but I would also need to level up my Destruction skill. The easiest way to do this is to buy the Curse of Weakness spell from Druja, which damages fatigue. Once you own a spell with a particular effect, you can then craft other spells with it. So, if you use the altar to make a spell that damages fatigue on self for one second, you can repeatedly cast it on yourself to power level destruction. I'm really tired. Me too, buddy. Me too. Next, I bought the Weakness to Poison spell from Kalendil and used it to craft a spell that does Weakness to Poison on target for 10 seconds at the cost of 53 magic per cast and named it appropriately. Finally, I also bought the Alchemy Lab upgrade for my home. Standing next to this lab while crafting potions gives you the Alchemical Brilliance perk, which boosts your alchemy by 15. Nice. Time to get one of my goals out of the way. No, 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 not the one about skydiving naked into the stadium during a World Cup final. Daedric Goth Mommy Nocturnal has had her eye stolen, and it's up to me to recover it, of course. By eavesdropping on the thieves, I quickly discovered that the eye was hidden in Tidewater Cave, a place filled with more trolls than the average YouTube comment section. It's very easy to get to the eye if you know where you're going. Luckily for me, I had no idea where I was going. With the eye returned to Nocturnal, she rewarded me with a stylish tea pose and, more importantly, the skeleton key. An unbreakable lockpick, which is generally one of the most useful items in the game, as it essentially allows you to pick any lock without risk. With that dealt with, I headed into Sankator to continue the main quest which involves killing four undead blades to release their spirits. Casting my weakness to poison spell on them removes their invulnerability to poison for a short time, meaning I could then poison them as normal. This takes a while and several applications of poison, but eventually the skelly bro fell, freeing the ghost of Realus. You have freed me. Yeah, just don't look behind you, okay? Now that he was released, I could turn my attention to the other three undead blades, who are all scattered in other areas of the dungeon. This is just more of the same. Cast spell, apply poison, run away, and don't die. Try not to get stuck in a corner though, that's my pro tip. Also, the skeleton key comes in very handy when dealing with this locked door in the prison section. With the four knights freed, it was time to face the burnt ivory king- Wait, wrong game. It was time to pick up some armour I can't even wear. Well, that's anticlimactic. Thank you for your service, fellas. I exited the dungeon, watched a bunch of people and animals having a drunken brawl, gave Martin the armour, and he told me I would now need to find a greater Welkin stone, which I could recover from the alien ruins of Mizar, Miskar, Mizkrakra, this place, because he's a needy little bitch. It's a sprawling maze filled with shambling undead, just like Croydon, which wasn't theoretically an issue now as I had a way to kill them. But god damn it takes a long time and a lot of poisons. So stealth seemed the better option. Just sneak through, steal the stone, get utterly pounded by the god king of zombies. You know, the usual. Then I remembered I had an invisibility spell, and after thinning some of the zombie herd down to make for an easier escape, I made off with the stone, returned to Martin, and gave him what would definitely be the final item he needed. Right? You're not going to like it. Oh, fuff. The next mission involves opening an extra large, family sized mega bucket Oblivion Gate outside Bruma, like an absolute mad lad. Unfortunately, it also involves keeping Martin alive as he's being swarmed by Daedra. So, getting allies from some of the other cities to help in this fight is very useful. 
Although you can get aid from six other cities, three of them send two soldiers each, while the other three only send one. So I focused on the first group. Firstly, Chadenal, where the Count's entitled knob of a son, Farwill, has entered the gate to play hero, and of course I'm expected to help him. Luckily, he did me the good grace to die. Less fortunately, his body ended up somewhere in the lava and I couldn't strip it of everything of value. So I proceeded to close the gate by sprinting past everything and returned to the Count with the good, I mean, bad news. The death of Farwell saddens me. My guy, you're literally smiling. Anvil next, and again, you can ignore everyone and sprint through the plains of oblivion without any issue if you know where you're going. Which I don't, but I don't know, this just sort of feels... Right, you know? With Anvil safe for the moment, I will send some of my best soldiers to bolster the Bruma garrison. Two. You're gonna send me two whole entire soldiers. Don't go crazy, love. It's only the world at stake. Finally, Coral, where the Oblivion Gate has this slightly annoying layout where you have to ascend various towers to open a set of gates before being able to reach the tower portal. Excuse me, would you mind awfully just moving out of the way just a little? Okay, you know what? Fuck you. With a grand total of six extra soldiers secured, I was slightly more confident about keeping Martin alive. But better safe than sorry. So I also crafted a heal spell that restores 25 HP on touch that I could keep using on him, as well as a shield spell and a better healing spell for my own benefit. It's gate in time, he said just before gating all over them. After I harvested more ingredients to make a bunch of useful poisons, as well as potions for healing and restoring my magicka, a huge total of 10 people showed up to cheer us on to certain death. We headed out to the Oblivion Gates, Martin stirred up the workforce, and shit went down. Poison, heal, keep Martin alive until the Great Gate opens, that kind of thing. Once inside, you're racing against the clock to shut the gate before the giant siege engine makes it out. But this is no issue since you can basically skip a bunch of stuff by just running alongside the lava before sprinting through some tunnels, opening a gate and climbing the tower portal to close it. Since I had empty pockets and plenty of time, I decided to actually kill all the Dramora I could for some valuables, took the Great Sigil Stone and shut the gate to be confronted with the sad sight of the battle's aftermath. Bird! Joffrey! Baurus! This guy! All dead! All dead! Oh well, more loot for me. Para, 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 para. Stop right there, criminal scum! During the course of the playthrough, I had also been playing Robin Hood and stealing from the rich to give to the poor. It's me. I'm the poor. In other words, we do be doing a little thievery. And in order to make this official and join the Thieves Guild, you need to speak to Armand Christoph in the Imperial City waterfront at midnight. He isn't particularly inclined to talk at first, which means raising his disposition. Hey, Armand, what do you think of Oblivion's Speechcraft minigame? Blah, 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 what a bore. Based. The quest loop for this guild is a pretty simple one. Get tasked with stealing some stuff, sell enough gear with the guild fences to be given another task, steal something else, repeat. Greedy bastard, aren't you? I stole some tax records from the city guard, relieved Chaden Hall Chapel of a stone bust, framed an informant, helped a lovely lady to recover her stolen ring. A filthy Argonian stole my precious ring. Oh, bit rich coming from someone with a weakness for laser pointers, if I'm being honest. I also stole the Archmage's staff for clout, broke into the Skingrad prison by unlocking a locked door with the Warden's key greater power and just walked through it right in front of the guard, because apparently that's not a crime or trespassing. Killed a vampire, found a stolen book, and forged a recommendation letter to have obnoxious jobs with Hieronymus Lex reassigned. Because there's nothing he loves more than licking a nice shiny boot or two. I am bound by duty and honor to obey this order. 
At this point, I had progressed far enough within the guild to get my job assignments directly from the legendary Grey Fox himself. And completing the rest of his quests rewards you with his famed Daedric Mask, the Grey Cowl of Nocturnal. Sure, but that doesn't sound very thievy of me. How about I just steal it instead? Here's how. Obtain a piece of headgear with zero weight, like this mage's hood. Sneak up to the grey fox and reverse pickpocket the hood into his inventory. Only weightless items can be placed in someone else's pockets, hence the mage's hood. And hit him with the unpoisoned dagger, which is fine as it does zero damage. This will make him swap his cowl for the hood, at which point you can paralyse him, steal the cowl, make a great escape from Bruma and pay your fine to Armand to re-enter the guild as if you hadn't just assaulted its leader. Finally, I can now roleplay as a sack of potatoes. Hey Martin, love what you've done with the place, but I really feel like you also need a scary portal. Much better. Entering the portal transports you to paradise, Mankar Cameron's hideout. So, the cat's paw of the Septims arrives at last. Excuse me, I'm trying to talk here. Inside, I met Cathetet, a friendly Dramora who gave me a choice of fighting him or serving him. After accepting his task to free another Dramora, which is a quick and easy two minute sprint, he handed me the bands of the Chosen and sent me into the Forbidden Grotto. This place is nice. Good thing I met Eldermill inside, a reformed mythic dawn cultist who offered to help me defeat Mankar. We deceived the jailer, Eldermill got distracted by fighting, I got lost and banged by a gang, and not in a fun way, I reloaded my save and... How is it that the Daedra forthrightly proclaim themselves to man, while the gods cower behind statues and the faithless words of traitor priests? They are not gods at all. The truth has been in front of you since you first were born. <laughs> <sighs> are you quite done yet? As I was saying, Eldenil freed me, and together we made our way out to face Mankar. You were the last gasp of a dying age. You breathed the stale. Oh, do shut the fuck up. I thought Mankar might be a little tough at least. But you can poison him and then use the stairs to run up to buy some time and... Oh. He's dead. That's right, dead serious about- Lord Dagon. Here's your stupid amulet, Martin. Now let's go F some ish up. The final section of the main quest involves fighting our way through the Imperial City as hordes of Daedra swarm the streets. Whilst I tried to make myself useful by helping to kill as much as possible, the real key here is trying to keep Martin alive, which is harder than controlling a child in a supermarket. Martin, what the fuck are you doing? After watching him die in front of me multiple times, I decided that my poison dagger should take a backseat to spamming heal over time potions to keep myself alive, and I turned my focus to Martin. Come here and let me fondle you with my healing hands. We're too late. Mehrun's Dagon is here. Yeah, you keep talking, buddy. No rush. At this point, you can sprint straight into the temple to trigger the epic finale. Martin said his goodbyes, and here it is. Hold up, wait, wait, wait. This music is all wrong. This fight isn't epic at all. Right, hang on, let me find something better. There was a fearsome demon Had a very scary form He was the most unholy creature that was ever born Even the other demon Was scared to let him join their games And if you want to meet him have to shout his name
Well, that was kind of anticlimactic, not gonna lie. Martin died because one does not simply survive the end of the game when one is voiced by Sean Bean... Sheenborn? That guy. Mayroons was sent back to oblivion, I was declared the champion of Cyrodiil, and my nostalgia trip back into the castle vault was almost over. Just one more bit of business to attend to. While slapping some Oda Certain Death on my trusty blade might have been sufficient to beat the main game, there is another source of poison which I haven't mentioned yet, because there wasn't really any place to use it effectively in this run. Poisoned Apples You can find a replenishing source of these in the end room of Fort Farragut in a locked barrel, which you can access through this hollow tree. Placing one of these apples into an NPC's inventory, and making sure all the other food in the area has been removed, will make them eventually eat the apple and succumb to a fast inevitable demise. <clears throat> hmm, I really should thank the Blades for all their help. You get an apple! And you get an apple! Everybody gets an apple! The apples are meant to be a part of the Dark Brotherhood questline. And you might have been wondering, Baron, why didn't you join the Dark Brotherhood, since they seem to fit the whole murdery poisoner vibe? Well, here's the thing. To join the Dark Brotherhood in Oblivion, you have to kill someone first. And, as you can see here, despite beating the entire main quest, I haven't actually killed anyone according to the game. Which makes sense, because, as I told you from the very start, I am, in fact, not a poisoner. Horse armor time! <laughs> 